It's a bicycle. An invention that Bob hopes will give the big three automakers a run for their money. This was one of the first ultralight fabric vehicles. Uh, it was built about five years ago, but it had a couple of design flaws. One was it didn't fold up, and the second one was it was very hard to get in and out of. But the new electric bike is a lot better, and it solves both of those problems. Bob's an engineer, so he eats problems for breakfast. But he's also a bit of a fortune teller. And his prediction? The family car is doomed. The physics behind the present-day automobile aren't sustainable. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not possible for everybody to drive cars for the next 50 years. There just isn't the resources on the planet or the space to build roads to put them on. So the cars have to become much smaller, run more efficiently, and what that will do is create a new environment, a more human environment on the road. When it comes to the environment, the bicycle leaves almost no footprint in your garage or on the power grid. It only takes three hours to charge and it's about 30 cents. So you just plug the car in and plug in the charger. This mansion used to belong to the man who drove the very first automobile into Guelph about a hundred years ago. Now it's Bob's home and headquarters for a simple idea that could revolutionize transportation. How about a car that doesn't guzzle fossil fuels? How about a car that runs on flashlight batteries? This car runs on flashlight batteries. Runs on uh, 20 D-cell batteries, which can uh, propel you about 15 kilometers around town. And when you come home, you just uh, plug it into the wall and you charge it up for about uh, 12 cents worth of electricity. So essentially, it reduces your transportation costs within your community to zero. For 12 cents a day, you can commute to work, not pay car insurance, never buy gas. It's just that people aren't ready for free transportation. Why cycle when you can why cycle? Bob figures it's only a matter of time before the whole world is asking that question. And then it's David and Goliath all over again. Wyke versus General Motors, and you know who's going to win. Yeah, they'll be there in about 20 minutes or so, and then... Uh... So, Bob, how come the whole world isn't breaking your door down? Why aren't you selling 5,000 Wykes a day? Yeah, because gas prices are still cheap and resources are still abundant. It's tough to sell. Then again, if at any time you want to get out and walk, well, just pull over, fold up the white, and... I suppose I would chain it to the meter, but I'll probably have to put a quarter in. <laughs> would I drive one? Yeah. I think I would, yeah. Well, it, it depends what the price is, and it's, um, it looks like it would be fairly inexpensive. You say you want to go on a trip that's longer than White's battery pack can handle? Well, Bob's got the answer for that, too. If the white was any smaller, it could pass for carry-on luggage. Out comes your white, and you're free as a bird once more. Is Bob Bell nuts when he says gas-driven cars are doomed? Maybe. But we thought steam locomotives would last forever, too.